Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 13 of Sports Science with myself, Dr. Will O'Connor, sports scientist, educator, and endurance athlete. Oh man, the optical heart rate monitors, they're the bane, like especially as a coach, man, they're so annoying for people to have such inaccurate data. It completely throws off like a lot of my analysis and my progress tracking. And I know for you as coaches and athletes, it is just super annoying to not be able to have reliable data. What do I mean when I'm talking about these, these wrist-based heart rate monitors? So, you know, you buy a GPS watch now, you buy any kind of tracking device, and it's got a heart rate monitor built in. These heart rate monitors are using these light-emitting diodes, LEDs, lights, and photo detectors. It's called photoplesmography is the way that these watches are trying to measure your heart rate through the emission and absorbed, well, more just the, the amount of light absorbed from your the, these lights, these LEDs are emitting light, and then your, your skin or essentially your tissue is absorbing some of it and reflecting it, some of it back into these photo detectors. And this is where the inaccuracies come in this whole measurement process. So the light is admitted and it is absorbed by the tissue that sits between your watch and then your blood vessels. As your heart beats, the blood through those blood vessels ex expands the blood vessel and compresses the tissue between your watch and the blood vessel and then less light is absorbed by the tissue and more light is reflected reflected back to the the photo sensors and the differentiation between the wavelength of light that is absorbed and reflected between beats of the heart can be interpreted interpreted by the software within your watch to to cipher what is your heart rate there, there just begins to be a lot of dis like error in this relatively basic measurement. It's been around for ages, I don't know, uh, multiple decades. It's, you know, if you've ever been to the hospital and they put on like an oxygen sensor, same kind of thing where um, if you alter the wavelength of light uh, emitted from the LEDs and you alter what kind of wavelength of light the photo sensor is trying to pick up you can detect even hemoglobin or red blood cells uh, and so that's if you've ever seen the moxie monitor or um you know some of the newer watches have um o2 saturation that they can detect and that's through the detection of hemoglobin with bound 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 hemoglobin oxygen in it and so it's the same process of the light being emitted, uh, reflected, and absorbed, and that absorption rate, I guess, um, based off of a standard, is going to decipher what is your heart rate and potentially what is your O2 saturation within your blood, um, and then also desaturation. So what can happen, though, is that this tissue compression can be affected just by movement. Uh, I have the the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro, uh, which is a relatively heavy watch. So when I'm running along, especially if I'm barreling down a trail, my watch and the movement of my arm can cause compression of the, of the tissue between the blood vessel and my watch. So now, what's happening? The light's being emitted, the tissue is absorbing that light and reflecting some back, and the photo detector is sensing the, that change in wavelength and the only its only job is to cipher wavelength changes and interpretate interpret that as heart rate well this compression and relaxation is actually coming from my arm carriage right it's coming from the movement of of the watch against my wrist in compressing that that tissue well that's that's going to cause a, a massive inaccuracy in heart rate because it's not measuring the tissue compression based off of the expansion and relaxation of my blood vessels, it's doing it based off of the compression of the watch against my skin, okay, against against my tissue. Well, one way they've tried to kind of negate that is by 
integrating the accelerometer readings, so that's, you know, the accelerometers measure displacement um, mm. in multiple planes, and that's how your, your watch is able to do step tracking or work when there's no GPS through the accelerometers. So it tries to say, all right, so the watch is moving this much, which means that this kind of reading is not from, uh, from the, the heart rate, it's from the watch movement. So they've tried to kind of implement another variable into this already inaccurate kind of reading. And then we have the, the light sensor. So the light sensor senses light. It ideally senses only the wavelength of light emitted from the LED on the back of the watch and reflected back by the tissue. However, if you do not have a good fit, if your watch is um, quite big and your wrist is quite skinny or you're quite bony and you don't have a nice flush placement of the, the watch against the skin, other light is going to get in. By other light, I mean just the light, right? And some of the wavelength, the same wavelength in the, the spectrum of light that is around us is going to be the same as what the LED is emitting and the photo detector is detecting. And so now that light that's being detected is not from the LED and it's not from the LED being light being reflected back into the photo detector. It's just from the environment. And the one job of that light detector is to say, this light comes from this sensor, this, um, this LED, which means it's coming from the tissue, and I'm reading that as either a compression or relaxation of tissue, which interpreted and is interpreted as a beat of the heart. And so now we have those two things in that you're running along and then potentially you're letting light in and the tissue's compressing, all while these, these LEDs and these photosensors are trying to just look at blood vessels under the skin. So I know Polar has these um, galvanic pins that try and sense how well placed the watch is against your skin and then try and run you know, whatever kind of uh, process through that data to try and you know, smooth it out. But again, we're, just, we're not getting that same accuracy as we would if we were using something like uh, electrocardiogram, ECG, which is I'll get into with a heart rate strap. So those are some of the issues that arise with, with these optical heart rate monitors and the main reasons that they're so bad. What manufacturers have done from the initial inception is added more photo detectors and more LEDs so that you can, the software can pick up that light is really, I guess, like loud. That frequency or signal is, appears to be a lot louder, a lot more intense than the, on this light sensor than these other two. And that's potentially because, you know, your, your watch lifted up at the front, but not at the back. And so the back is, is reading accurately and the front has detected that that's an external light source, not an internal light source. Um, and so we can kind of throw that data away and just focus on these other sensors. Yeah, so there's there's a lot. There's a lot going on in there, and they are trying, but that's why you've seen, um, I know Polar has, oh, I, can't, I forget what it's called, but it's just a strap that you can put anywhere on your body, and so that's going to really um, add accuracy. The, the straps Mio, I think uh, they do one as well. These optical straps that if you are not into wearing one of these heart rate straps that they're, they're going to help because it's not right at the extremity. And then you have skin tone. So if, you know, if you're extremely dark or you have a lot of freckles or moles under the watch compared to if you're really hairy or you're really pasty, uh, white like I am, you're going to absorb those wavelengths differently as well. And so there needs to be some kind of... Um, factor constant reading system based on you know the huge array of skin tones that are out there then you have just general skin densities and we're only really looking at the change but still if you're extremely skinny versus if you're extremely obese how's that gonna how if you're extremely obese it's gonna be really hard to decipher 
and detect the changes in compression from uh, your your blood vessel that is potentially quite deep. So again, it's just layers upon layers of inaccuracies that can cause your wrist-based heart rate monitor to be as crappy as it is. So what's the alternative? We have heart rate straps. Love heart rate straps. This process has been around for at least four to five decades now of placing electrodes on your sternum to detect the electrical signal that is sent from well, your brain to your heart to initiate and engage a contraction. So what these uh, electrodes do, so that you know the smooth parts on your on your heart rate strap, is they just are able to detect the electrical signal and then they can use that electrical signal to interpret the beats of your heart. It's super simple and super accurate. And now with you know the likes of HRV, so heart rate variability. We're getting to the point of measuring the different like the time differences between beats of the heart and again you know wrist space can potentially do that at rest you know because you're not influencing the compression of of the tissue and you're not influencing any light so if you're just you know it's it's relatively easy to measure resting heart rate through the optical sensors that's why they put those um optical sensors on your finger when you're at the hospital to measure your o2 saturation so this process is it's it's decades old it's time proven the only real issues you have with something like your electro based electrocardiogram uh heart rate straps is the placement so you could potentially place it in the your heart rate strap in the wrong way that it doesn't get a strong enough signal to be able to uh the for the main little transmitter device uh, to detect the, the heart rate and so you may get a little discrepancy there and the other thing is if it's not moist enough so there's not enough uh, conduction between the electrode and your skin then maybe you might not get a, a very accurate reading there obviously batteries the other one's the type of clothes you're you're wearing so how much alec static electricity they can conduct because you know if you're running along you start and you look down at your watch and you think 160 170 i've only just started and potentially you're not sweaty yet and uh your clothes are moving against the heart rate monitor and they're creating an electrical signal themselves and it's actually just picking up your cadence so it's often i'll start off with a run and uh, not so much with this this garmin one i've noticed is uh really well the hrm run HRM try that one is actually. Uh, I've noticed that one really good. Some of the old school ones, uh, which are a bit more harder plastic than a softer strap, they they definitely um, were affected more um, from from clothing. But yeah, I'll notice that. Yeah, my it's like one sixty to one seventy, which is very similar to my cadence. And it's just picking up static. Once I get sweaty and there's a bit of uh, a bit better conduction under the strap, and and that's it. That's how measuring heart rate works and why your optical heart rate monitors are associate there's just too many variables that are going to impact how the reading and you know for some people it's going to be amazing for me aerobic runs where i'm not moving a lot not a lot of compression not a lot of light let in then i'm getting really good readings but as soon as i start to go really hard greater movements hey it's, it's just not for everyone they will get there they definitely will but right now oh i don't know it's it's six and one half dozen the other i guess all right guys until next time check me out on all my social medias strava um instagram facebook linkedin youtube and if you're on youtube please subscribe like uh, i'm trying to get my once i get up to a thousand uh, other people start getting told about the channel so it really helps all right till next time catch you later happy training